welcome as we come together to acknowledge and celebrate the at-homeness of the Holy Spirit within ourselves and within each other. The Feast of Pentecost is celebrated in the Church to celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to the Apostles and the emerging community of mainly Jewish believers. The feast is celebrated on the Sunday 50 days after Easter and 10 days after the Ascension. I remember a short story told by Tony DeMello. To a preacher who kept saying, we must put God in our lives, the master said, God is already there. Our business is to recognise this. And as John Dado Lurie has put it, we are born perfect, complete and lacking nothing. I interpret these two statements of wisdom that their meaning might be the Holy Spirit is at home in us from the beginning. We need to awaken to the fact. Last weekend, with new travel options, we went up to our house at Mount Glorious, marvelling at the fresh greenness of the trees as they were flushing and the bellbirds chiming. Cyrus, the roof man, and his mate who looks after the trees arrived to undertake some jobs. What an unfolding of the Holy Spirit. What a surprise. Cyrus had been adopted as a young lad by an Anglican priest and his family. The priest, in fact, died only a week ago. Decades before, the priest had been sacked by his parish and the bishop. Cyrus said, it was because of a movement of the spirit. And he repeated the statement. The spirit had led him to a place beyond where the locals were entrenched and not open and vulnerable to the movement of the spirit. Again, Cyrus said, it was a movement of the spirit. I realised, of course, that I could never know what that experience of the movement of the Spirit was. Likewise, I do know what it means to be slain in the Spirit, nor the beliefs of charismatic Christianity. But if the Holy Spirit is truly at home in me, then I am called to show respect and love to these Christian folk, my fellow Spirit-filled Christians. While at Mount Glorious, Cecily asked Cyrus if he would bring some cut logs up to where we could fetch them, to take them into the house. He brought an armful inside to the barrel wood heater that we have. As a new log was placed on the glowing coals, the wind blew through the open front door, which is opposite the wood heater, and the coals burst into flames. We were astounded and let out our amazement in our native tongue, that is, Aussie slang, just as the bellbirds encompass the mountain, chiming in their own distinctive tongue. This was a contemporary manifestation of the story of wind, of flames, and speaking in tongues, just like the one that we read in the Acts of the Apostles. Acts was written by the same anonymous author who penned the gospel we call Luke and was written somewhere 80 to 90 of the Common Era to early in the second century. As part of the inspection of the roof, Cyrus had a leg on either side of the ridge of the roof. He was literally on the edge. At Pentecost, the disciples were on the edge. On one hand, grieving the death of Jesus, their teacher, and then suddenly experiencing the indwelling of the Spirit. No longer left, lost, but aflame with love, 
caring, compassion, a voice for justice, and alive with the mission to live the reality of and to continue the teachings of Jesus. The story of the gifts of the Spirit from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, an authentic letter of Paul, lists a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. The gifts, although personal, are for the common good. This letter was penned around 40, 53 to 54 of the Common Era, probably from Ephesus. Paul had never met Jesus, but personally had a profound experience on the road to Damascus. He knew the spot. He knew the at-homeness, the indwelling of the Spirit, and endeavoured to live this reality. Paul writes, in the one spirit there are varieties of gifts, varieties of service and varieties of activities. For us to embody and live the reality of these gifts, the ones that Paul had listed, would require a university or theology degree. But one isn't given a degree or a diploma after the experience of the Holy Spirit. Nothing to frame forever. It is more like the starting flag for life lived in the Spirit. And how about Cyrus and the tree man, ordinary guys in the everyday world of everyday life? Yes, they too, and all of us, are blessed to have the Holy Spirit at home in us, as the people we are, just as we are. And a further insight. Cyrus, the name that comes up in the Old Testament. Cyrus was an Old Testament figure around 576 to 530, before the Common Era, and was the patron saint and deliverer of the Jews and was the king of Persia. We must be respectful of the Jewish Shavuot, one of the three festivals where observant Jews ascend to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast. We read the Psalms of Ascent in our lectionary readings every year. Was it at such a celebration where Jesus and John the Baptist met? Could it have been that Jesus the Jew the apostles, his mother, women disciples, and others following Jesus' teaching been at this Shavuot. What teachings from Cyrus with the bellbirds chiming, the song of the spirit as if speaking in tongues. Our Mount Glorious experiences of the spirit we're in an open space of the kitchen, the dining and living area. The upper room, if you like. The upper room, or cynical in East Jerusalem, has a place in dogma of being the site of the Last Supper, the post-Easter appearances of Jesus and of Pentecost. Almost certainly none of these but the upper room can serve as an appropriate metaphor for the place of our meeting God and the place of our spiritual practice. We are of limited use if we, we remain spiritually room-bound. Yes, I'm aware of the COVID-19 rules, stay at home, only leave for essential functions. But in a non-COVID-19 world, and even amongst its restrictions, and as allowed, we need to venture out from our upper room into the highways and the byways of everyday life. A seamless journey, as the two are, in fact, one in the spirit. Pentecost is that to and fro journey from practice to practice and back again. From our practice of our rule of life 
our openness and vulnerability to the grace of God, to the practice of the presence of God in the world as the presence of God, enlivened by the Holy Spirit. A graced Pentecost celebration to all.
Thank you.